In November last year, the small spacecraft Philae landed on the surface of the comet 67P. So Philae was part of the Rosetta mission by the European Space Agency. And everyone was really excited because this is the first time that we'd ever landed something on the surface of the comet deliberately. And everyone got really excited and there's loads of press coverage about it and everyone around the world could watch it land and we're all watching people's reactions in the European Space Agency to see what happened. But sadly, nothing quite went to plan. You see, Philae was supposed to harpoon itself down onto the surface of the comet to hold it in place. But something went wrong, so what actually happened was Philae bounced a couple of times off of the surface of the comet. It landed somewhere that we still don't actually know where it is. Now we think that Philae landed inside a crater on the comet. Now this is a big problem for Philae, because Philae powers itself using solar panels. These solar panels are what people have on their roofs to create electricity, or you might also have them on small lights in your garden. The solar panels just use the energy from the sun to create power to run it. But because Philae was stuck in a crater, what we think happened is that the light from the sun couldn't actually reach towards Philae because it was stuck deep down into the surface of the comet. And because it didn't have enough power, it very quickly ran its batteries out, and then it stopped communicating and doing any science with us because it was running out of power. But the good news is that as the comet, and hence Philae, the small lander which is on the comet, is being, getting closer and closer towards the sun, it's been able to get more and more sunlight. The more sunlight it gets, the more power it can have. So we've been waiting for several months for it to get to this position, but finally, thankfully on Saturday, we finally received some signals back off of Philae, which means it's finally getting enough sunlight to power its batteries. And because it can now communicate, it can now begin to also some science as well. But don't get too excited. The signals that Philae sent on Saturday and Sunday only lasted around 10 seconds, and there's only a few of them each. Now, scientists expect there should be a lot more of these signals, and they should last a lot longer. But what this means is that Philae could be in a much worse position than we actually thought it was. It could be in a really deep crater with high walls, and so it's very hard for it to be able to communicate back to Rosetta before Rosetta sends all the information and the communications back to us down here on Earth. This is a really big problem, because it also means that Philae might not get enough sunlight to ever be able to do large scientific missions or to do large amounts of communication, because it just still can't quite get enough sunlight. But hopefully, as Philae gets closer and closer towards the sun, it will get more and more sunlight on its solar panels. This will be able to charge its batteries and it will begin to be able to do some science again. Because Philae did some science in the first 60 hours it had running on battery life when it first landed on the comet, but since then it hasn't had enough power to do anything. But hopefully Philae will be able to do more of the research it's hoping to do, which is study the composition of the comet, to be able to study its surface, and also a lot more things to do with the comet that we really don't know much about. So it's really important that Philae gets enough power so it can start doing more research into the future. So now we just have to wait. We have to wait to see if Philae gets more and more power as it gets closer and closer towards the sun, if it ever gets enough power to do a lot more communication and to begin doing some science again. But fingers crossed, it seems like we didn't really expect Philae to be able to wake up again. A lot of people doubted that it ever would. So this is really good news that it's finally woken back up again from its little slumber. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for some great scientific videos. Otherwise, like and subscribe, leave some comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon. So the legend goes, if you drop a penny from the top of the Empire State Building, and it hits someone in the head, it could kill them. A relatively sharp piece of metal dropping 450 metres from above, and it hit me on the head, it's probably not something I'd want to do. But is this real? Would a penny falling from the top of the Empire State Building hit you? Or is this just a load of old rubbish?